down your altars and kill your prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take away. And God said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And Elijah, when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice from him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forgiven, forgiven your covenant, forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and Killed your prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to me, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel to be king over Israel. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, and Aholah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of his ale shall be he who put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of the ale shall be I shall put to death. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxygen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow you. And Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done, what have I done to you? And Elijah returned from following him and took the ox, broke the yoke of the oxen and sacrificed it to the oil of the flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people. Then he rose and went after Elijah and said to him, This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our intro this morning is from Psalm 85. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God and the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory, glory be to the be Father, to the and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let's listen to the reading of the second lesson. It is from Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, be careful, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you, are, you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour, 
control. Against such things there is no law. And those that belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dearly beloved, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit cannot enter the kingdom of God. Are you filming? So, what are your names? Shannon and Ann, receive the sign of the cross on your foreheads. And on your hearts to mark you as one redeemed by Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, in the days of Noah, you condemned the world and punished its sins with a great flood. But in your mercy, you spared Noah and his family because they trusted your word and obeyed. You drowned Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, but led the children of Israel through the water on dry ground because they trusted and obeyed your word. These events foreshadowed the washing clean of sins in baptism. Jesus, your word, went down into the waters of the Jordan River and was baptized to show us the path through the waters of death into life. You sent the Holy Spirit to rest on him as a dove, and you sent that same Holy Spirit to live in us and promise us new life through faith in your word, Jesus. We pray that you will look on these young ones according to your mercy and bless them in your grace with true faith through the Holy Spirit, and that through the flood of baptismal waters, and our faith in your grace and mercy, we take away the sin they inherited through Adam and Eve, and any they may have committed or will commit, so those sins are drowned and die. Amen. There's a very old tradition that all baptismal candidates should have sponsors. We ask that sponsors confess their faith as expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. The sponsor is expected to pray for the baptismal candidate, support them in their ongoing Christian instruction, and nurture their growing faith, and encourage them to attend church. You are at all times to be examples of faith in Christ and love for your neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Shannon and Anna as sponsors in the Christian faith? Yes, with the help of God. God help you to do this his faithful and loving work in thought, word, and deed, and by his grace fulfill what you're unable to do through the Holy Spirit working in you. Amen. Let us pray together and join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forward, now and forevermore. Amen. Shannon and Anna, do you reject the devil? Yes. yes, I reject him. Do you reject all his works? Yes, I reject him. Do you reject all his ways? Yes, yes I reject them. Do you believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes. Little ones, do you want to be baptized and say I do? God the Father Almighty, may faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, give these children new life through this birth of water. May the Holy Spirit, who forgives all our sins, strengthen these children through his grace from this time on for life everlasting. Amen. Receive these baptismal towels to show you have been washed clean by Jesus, who covers all your sins like a sparkling white robe, so that you may stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the promise of eternal life with him, prepared before the foundation of the earth. Receive these crosses as a constant reminder of Jesus and what he's done for you. Always remember that trusting Jesus is the only path to salvation and eternal life. United with all others who trust in Jesus and living in the presence of God forever. In baptism, God the Father has made you members of his Son and our Lord Jesus Christ and an heir with us in the kingdom of heaven and his church here on earth. We receive you in the name of Jesus as fellow children in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of the triune God who has called us out of darkness into light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have graciously brought us all into the family of God and have now granted these children rebirth through water and new life in baptism and faith in Jesus. We pray in humility that you would keep these children in your grace and according to your mercy. You would help them through the Holy Spirit to grow in faith and with all your children who have received their promised inheritance in heaven. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. And a verse for you on your baptism from Matthew 19. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Please rise for the reading of the gospel, which is found in the 
ninth chapter of Luke, beginning at the 51st verse. Glory to you, Lord. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him, who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people didn't receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. And they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Here ends the gospel. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in the words of the Apostles' Creed, page 12, tell me what you believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in and Jesus, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to the church to quicken the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the, the Holy, Holy Christian Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. to death, trying to light a block of ice for heat, you'd think they were crazy, right? How can fire be started by water? Depends on what's in the water. According to Carolyn Delbert in an April 21st, 2020 online popular mechanical, uh, mechanics article, methane gas gets trapped under the Arctic permafrost in the lattice of frozen water. This is called clathrate. It's the most common hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon supply on Earth. Imagine being lost in the frozen north and keeping warm by lighting the ice. What was tundra or frozen lake can be transformed into a fiery inferno where living water and flame exist simultaneously. Likewise, our flesh can be transformed from being trapped 
frozen in sin and cold as the dead into sources of living water and enlightening fire. But not if we think we're too cold to catch fire. There are lots of people who look at others or even themselves and think it's impossible for the Holy Spirit to catch fire inside them. Our symbol for the Holy Spirit is a flame, specifically a cloven tongue of fire. Not to demolish any childhood Sunday school images of forked flames flickering above someone's head, that's probably not quite what Luke intended in his account of Pentecost. It's more like Christmas Eve. One light divided into many when a flame is taken from the altar or a Christ candle by the pastor and given to an elder and then spread among the congregation. This week is not the actual Pentecost Sunday, but one of the 29 weeks ignited by it that we call the church season where we are to celebrate and study the influence of the Holy Spirit on us, or more accurately, in us. By sheer proportion, we might guess this means we need to focus most of our attention on keeping in step, or walking, with the Holy Spirit. And it's a perfect theme for a baptismal Sunday. We just happen to have a double baptism at, at Otto in about an hour. Part of doing that is like Elijah or Elisha, not looking back. It's a pivot point in our lives that marks a difference between what was and what will be. Fire is also a symbol of baptism. One of the odd times when fire and water exist together. Even stranger, it's the water that starts the fire and plants it in us. Some denominations think we Lutherans are crazy for trying to start the fire of the Holy Spirit in a baby or a young child. I would refer anyone of that opinion to read Luke 1, 41 through 45. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is it this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And I did not write this a couple of days ago. I wrote this a couple of months ago. Thank you. Now, if the Bible says a baby, even one yet unborn, can react to the Holy Spirit, we Lutherans, and Catholics too, seem a lot less insane. But we aren't here to justify infant baptism this morning or argue against abortion. If we wanted to, the first chapter of Luke would be a good place to start on either subject. Those are topics for other sermons. Today, we're going to look at the problems we have believing God can forgive our sins in us or anybody else. We can beat ourselves up terribly. Some people reject salvation through Christ because they can't imagine him ever being able to forgive them. But if we approach in humility and trust him to forgive us, he will. Admitting we have all sinned before God and each other assures he will forgive us. That doesn't mean we won't face temporal punishment. As the theme song from an old TV Oak show advised, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. It also doesn't mean we have a right to hold a grudge against someone no matter what they've done, because Jesus forgiving them seems as insane 
as trying to light a block of ice. One of the consequences of sinning against each other is that uneasy and queasy feeling that we can't trust each other. Well, let me help you with that. We don't forgive for the sake of the other person. Forgiveness is something we do for the sake of the innocent, bitter sufferings and death of Jesus. What we've done to him deserves death of body and soul with a side order of eternal punishment. <laughs> Our sins against God are a little more serious than borrowing someone's electric drill or breaking it and failing to return it. We forgive because he forgave us more, just like in that parable about the unforgiving servant. And forgiving someone is also more for us than them. Sometimes we hold a grudge against someone, but they don't even know they've wronged us. They may even feel justified because of the things they think we've done. They aren't suffering, but we feel sick inside. It's not easy to forgive someone under those circumstances, but the awful feeling inside us won't go away until we do. Since we are made in the image of God, we can assume he feels the same way about humanity. We all get to play God this morning. We all know that feeling like we should forgive someone, but we are hurt and burning inside and wanting justice. Ask me how mad I was about the state trying to illegally put a road over our farm. I wouldn't have liked it if they could follow the law. No matter how much justice was visited on them, the churning inside me wouldn't go away. Do you suppose they even remember my name? Who did all my outrage hurt? But me. A much better feeling to have burning inside us is what we saw a couple weeks ago. Burning hearts for communion with Jesus and a desire to pass that heartburn on to others. That type of internal fireworks burning in us is good. Getting mad at other people also irks God. Remember that those other people, no matter what they've done, are God's children too. If someone says something bad about one of your kids, you wouldn't like it. Well, maybe there are some exceptions, but... <laughs> Even if you know your kids have done something really bad. They're still your kids. God's no different. Maybe one of the reasons some people can't forgive others is that they can't believe God can forgive them. Now, when I say that, it doesn't mean giving yourself a pass on sin. It means stewing about past sins. We've already gone to Jesus to forgive. Believe me, I know what it means to feel terrible about things done in the past that I can't go back and fix or never could have changed no matter what I did. If people see us lamenting over forgiven sins and past failures, why would they trust Jesus to forgive them? It's too bad there's no parable about someone forgiven but continuing to punish themselves. When God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, that doesn't just mean justice visited on others. It's us too. He took out his outrage for our sins on Jesus at the cross. There's no more vengeance to be exacted, even against us. Relax. Even if there was, we couldn't pay it in a way that would appease God and allow him to forgive us. He wants to forgive us. Jesus wouldn't have bothered to waste 30 years in human form and let his human body be killed unless forgiving us was extremely important to him. 
All anyone needs to do to receive this forgiveness <coughs> is to ask. We ask God to forgive others too. Like our children when we bring them for baptism. They ask for themselves when they're confirmed. We continue to ask for our own forgiveness every week in confession and especially when we partake of communion. No wonder we burn inside for it. The fire of the Holy Spirit ignites our desire to confess our sins and accept Jesus' forgiveness. But remember, everything we have done is forgiven at that moment. It's okay to admit we're sorry for past sins already forgiven, but we don't need to have them forgiven every time we approach the Lord's table. Just the new ones. We're human. We have an unlimited supply of new sins that need forgiving. Providing we genuinely ask God for forgiveness, he's already settled the bill with Jesus a long time ago. Part of the living water of Christ embedded in the lattice of his triune nature is the fire of the Spirit. Releasing the fire of the Spirit is like burning ice embedded with clathrates. The fire releases living water. The hard and inflexible law and nature of God that can only destroy us becomes soothing, life-saving heat and life-giving water when we release it by asking for and giving forgiveness. It's the nicest gift we get from God we can also pass on to others. Forgiveness is not a treasure to be trapped and stored, but released by the fiery spirit of love to melt hearts frozen as a block of ice. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be in your hearts and in your minds. Please join me for the offertory on page 12. Create me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me thy Holy Spirit. Amen. Healing God, remember our sick, especially Diane, Linda, Rebecca, Scott, and Todd, and those who have suffered the loss of love, especially this week, again, the families in the set. Place your loving hands and healing on them and great moments of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good shepherd, lead your church throughout the world to burn with the desire to receive and give your forgiveness by bringing the good news to the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Friends of peace, bring your peace to our fallen world, especially we pray for those in our surrounding community that they may join with us in worship. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Rule of the universe, send your spirit upon all leaders of this world so that they feel compelled to follow your perfect example of humility in serving humankind rather than desiring to be so. Lord, in your mercy. God of all good gifts, we thank you in the person of others for the manifold blessings you have showered on us. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Anna and Shannon to become members of the family of God. Heavenly Father, thank you for protecting me and keeping my body intact. Lord, in your mercy. Here are prayers. These and all other things we bring before you in Jesus' name. The Father's of praise. Father, Lord of heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
the scriptures to be written to our learning. Grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and understand them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Now may the Lord bless and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. Amen.